Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll have a look at the weather warnings if we do have yellow rain warnings in force and then we'll have a look at the GFS, the GEM, the ECDF and the GFS ensembles finishing up with the UK Met Office run as well. Now we have got a lot of rain around at the moment um, or we have had a lot of rain around. It is really dry actually at the moment I'm recording this however we do still have showers pushing through and we have more Big weather fronts out in the Atlantic starting to push into Ireland. We did have a lot of rain last night and into today as well. And again, we could see a school line move through tonight into tomorrow. Beyond that, though, uh, into the first week of November, it is looking like it's going to be turning very cold, potentially. Uh, with temperatures a good few degrees, if not getting up to maybe five degrees below average. Maybe some snow over Scotland. But beyond that, into next weekend, the uncertainty does build where we're going to be staying cold or going more westerly. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So we do have a look at the live radio. You can see the big mass of rain that we had earlier today is now off towards Norway, Denmark, um, into um, Scandinavia. We have a few showers around in the west, but nothing major. But we do have a big weather front in the southwest, um, out towards Ireland at this stage. And it's going to be pushing eastwards over the next few hours and there will potentially be some very heavy rain tonight into tomorrow morning with the potential again of another squall line moving through with very gusty winds and very heavy rain at times now if we do have a look at the weather warnings you can see at the moment there is a yellow rain warning in force in the south from 11 p.m tonight till 3 p.m tomorrow for that very heavy rain and you can see a band of rainfall will arrive from the southwest england and wales 20 30 millimeters of rain within a few hours maybe a gusty winds up to 40 miles per hour maybe 50 or 60 miles an hour as well uh high likelihood lower impact but still could be some very significant conditions from this if we have a look at sunday you still have the yellow warning in the south and we have two yellow warnings one across northern england we've had a look at before then 3 a.m tomorrow till 6 a.m on monday we have a new yellow warning across parts of aberdeenshire from tomorrow at 10 a.m. till 7 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, as again, heavy rain falling onto saturated ground could be some big impacts uh, and some flooding from that as well. And again, of course, the Monday is still the one across northwestern areas uh, of England, parts of Wales and southern Scotland. So we do now have a look through the GFS and see why we have this very unsettled weather at the moment with low pressure just sitting over the top of us with big trough um, out in the Atlantic. Now, as we move that through, you can see that big low, that vigorous low moves through overnight tonight into tomorrow and Monday, bringing in very heavy rain. And then we veer the wind into a northerly direction. Some colder air does push in. We could be seeing something turning very chilly next week. However, the high pressure does top towards was next weekend. We know we go a bit more westerly. Beyond that, the uncertainty does build around day 10. This GFS run still has us quite westerly, colder sex at times, but generally winds are coming from west or southwest. Now, the GFS are, um, is a little bit of a warmer ensemble run, or warmer outlier, as we'll see in the GFS ensembles in a minute. So it is on the warmer end of the spectrum, you can see right towards the end of the run. We actually do plunge into very cold northerly wind towards the end of the run. Um, and if you have a look at the age 50 HPA temperature deviation, you can see very, very cold air is moving through with a straight northerly but this is right towards the end of the run and it's just something that could happen and seeing the patterns we're seeing through november at this stage I couldn't, you couldn't rule out seeing a very big northerly wind like this so we'll have to keep an eye really on what happens throughout the middle of november so if you do now have a look at the gm see how those compared to the other model the gfs you can see again the trough moving through overnight the next few days and then big northerly wind and then we do go flat westerly for a time um, and right towards day 10, it does look like the jet stream's really powering up. There is a bit of heights rising towards the north, maybe up towards Greenland and northern Canada, but nothing too major, and generally things are looking very stormy. Probably, though, a little bit cooler, especially in the north, with some colder air out in the North Atlantic. If we do have a look at the Eastern BF, see if that doesn't compare again. Northerly winds moving through by the end of this week after the unsettled weather, and then generally, again, westerly winds, but you can see we are seeing the tropospheric polar vortex sort of get displaced towards our side of the pole, which may mean it a lot more low pressure dominated, but it also means a lot more cold air is sort of coming out into the Atlantic. So if we did see any ridging, we would have a much colder northerly wind than we than we have at the moment, or we're going to be having next week. So very much we've got to keep an eye on what happens with this. So we do have a look at the GFS ensemble, as you can see, a lot of that all well reflected. You can see very heavy rain over the next day or so with that very heavy rain moving through. 
overnight tonight into tomorrow. But temperatures are going to be well below average for the next week from the 1st of November all the way to around the 7th, 8th of November. You can see temperatures are going to be around freezing or below at 850 HPA, which doesn't sound really cold, but it's a good 4 or 5 degrees potentially below what we'd expect this time of year. Beyond that, into the longer term, you can see still not massive precipitation spikes. There's still a lot of uncertainty with exactly where the uh, high pressure and low pressure is going to be placed. But you can see there's a lot of scatter in the temperature chart. Some going up towards 8, 10 degrees at 850 HPA. Others going down to about 6 degrees or lower. Um, you can see the operational run. The thicker green line is on the warmer end of the spectrum. But it is in the more favourable at this stage that it is going to be coming a little bit milder next weekend. But beyond that, there is big, big uncertainty with some very cold members and some very mild members. If we have a look at, the, at Glasgow further north, you can see generally, again, cold over the next week. Not quite as much uh, colder than average than for London, but it's still getting down to sort of minus one, minus two, and 850 HP, a couple degrees below average. In the longer term, precipitation does return around 7th, 8th of November, and temperatures are much more varied, with some going really quite mild, if not warm, others going much cooler or colder. So, yeah, we'll have to keep an eye really what happens with this. Again, this time of year, we still have a lot of mild air to our south, a lot of cold air to our north. So very subtle changes in the pressure patterns can give vastly different uh, sort of outcomes. So we'll have to see really what happens. Uh, but at this stage, the uncertainty really is building for the middle of November. If we do have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at uh, precipitation and temperature, you can see tonight that heavy rain is pushing in. And by early hours of tomorrow morning, 7, 8, 9, 10 a.m., that squall line will be moving through very heavy rain at times potentially and once that does clear tomorrow may be a decent day for many areas in the east in the afternoon but heavy showers pushing in from the west um, and those are going to continue and you can see why we do have those yellow warnings in force beyond that we do see temperatures uh, sorry um rainfall still continuing further northwards but nothing too major um in the south with still a, quite a few showers around and beyond that we do see that northern wind starts to come in a few snow showers potentially over towards scotland um and beyond that still dry as again a northern airflow is a drier air mass so it's going to be a little bit drier than a west or northwesterly wind if we do have a look at temperatures, you can see at the moment, it is pretty chilly, only 13, 14 degrees. But again, that's not too abnormal for this time of year. But compared to what we've had over the last couple of months, it is quite chilly. Uh, coming off the back of summer, of course. If you have a look at Sunday, you can see temperatures in the afternoon. It could be maybe 12, 13 degrees, a little bit colder than the northwards and westwards. And by Monday, once we start to get into that colder air mass, you can see temperatures again. 10, 11 degrees maybe in the south, but really struggling into mid to high single digits in the north. And all areas overnight Monday is going to be quite cold. 2, 3 degrees potentially, uh, 6 a.m. on Tuesday widely, um, and maybe a little bit colder in a few spots. Tuesday afternoon is going to be pretty chilly again, maybe 9, 10 degrees, so struggling into double digits, so pretty chilly. Uh, and then by Wednesday... Potentially again another overnight frost in a few areas uh, and Wednesday afternoon quite cold once again maybe 9 or 10 degrees and then by Thursday again another overnight frost especially in the north maybe in the south still getting down to maybe 2 or 3 degrees um, and in the afternoon really only 9 or 10 degrees so really quite chilly week coming up. So uncertainty is really building for the next few weeks it doesn't look we're going to see a lot of rain over the next day or two then it's going to be turning much colder then there are signs of westerly winds to come back, but in the longer term, as we saw by that GFS operational run, the amplification in the jet stream does look like it could be returning, and we could be going much colder once again, as of course, as we progress through November, more cold air does brew to our north, so we've got to keep an eye really what happens with that. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.